The human behavior appears to be environmentally determined, meaning if you were raised by the Seminole Indians as a baby, never saw anything else, you'd hold that value system. And this goes for nations, it goes for individuals, for families. They try to indoctrinate their children to their particular faith and their country and make them feel like they're part of that. What the Venus Project proposes is an entirely different system that's updated to present day knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, freaks and geeks, legendary peeps, I'm about to critique the works of one of my favorites. In fact, favorite would be an understatement. I would say that Jacques Fresco is the most revolutionary pioneer of the last 100 years of the 21st century. He is probably the key figure responsible for the Zeitgeist Movement, which I know a lot of people hold Peter Joseph to be responsible for, but it's actually Jacques Fresco that got the ball rolling. It's his work with the Venus Project that gave Peter Joseph the knowledge to, uh, to take this thing to a new level. And I want to say that I massively respect the works of Jacques Fresco. I'm not just saying that. I love his insight and his drive to want to create a better world. I mean, the guy is over 100 years now and is still working towards creating a better society. Now, without a doubt, say what you will about this guy, but he's definitely moving towards a higher level of consciousness with what he wants. I came across a video that he uh, was featured on where he responds to someone's comments about vegetarianism and you know, he said some things which um, in all honesty made a lot of sense but from a honest perspective I think we're also unassailably flawed and uh, I'm going to dissect this video let's just get this thing rolling and let's see what Jacques Fresco the founder of the Venus Project and one of the key pioneers of the zeitgeist movement let's see what he has to say about vegetarianism somebody says to me are you a vegetarian you know you don't eat meat or you eat only organic foods i used to be a vegetarian so i saw a cancer on rabbits which are vegetarians i saw a cancer on cows and they found cancer on dinosaur bones all right, so Jacques Fresco finds cancer on cows, on rabbits, on dinosaur bones. Now, I am concluding that he's under the mindset that, well, vegetarians tend to have a more robust immune system and are as likely to get cancer. And considering that these herbivorous animals are vegetarians, it is somewhat of a surprise that they got cancer. Now, I'm assuming that this is where he's going with this. Bearing in mind that, of course, vegetarians and vegans can get cancer. Of course, vegetarians, vegans, they can get sick. They're just a lot more. Blood of those eating vegan fights about eight times better. <laughs> Stronger when it comes to resisting these things. And without going into the science of it, it is pretty well established right now that eating processed meats and meat in of itself, red meat, causes cancer in addition to many other problems. And one of the best things that you can do is to cut this stuff out of your diet. So I don't know if he made the decision to become a vegetarian because he was wanting to avoid cancer, but nothing is a guarantee in this world, but there are definitely things that you can do to restrict or reduce your chances of getting sick and adopting a plant-based diet is without a doubt one of the best things that you can do. Anyway, let's go on. Now a guy, I don't know if you know this, we have uh, uh, labels we give animals, such as animal life and plant life. Yes. But there are certain plants that can convert sunlight to tissue. But when the sun isn't out, it behaves like an animal. It eats things, other plants and other animals. Okay, now basically what Jacques Fresco is saying here is because 
there are certain plants that have certain characteristics that are similar to that of animals. That line between plant and animal can sometimes become gray. True, 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 true. Yes, there are certain plants, classic example, the Venus flytrap, that behaves like an animal. However, as far as we are aware on a scientific level, it is not an animal. It does not have pain receptors. It is alive and responds to stimuli and without a doubt has an awareness just like everything within this universe, including my strand of hair. For instance, if I took my hair, if you can see this, and I put this under some kind of a electrode and measured this for stimuli to see if it responded, without a doubt, my hair strands would respond because there is life within my hair strands. It is aware on some level. It's not by any real definition an animal, but it has certain microscopic particles, amoebas, that are within it that I'm sure would respond to stimuli. And similar to plants, there is definitely life force. There is definitely energy within this thing. However, to say that this is akin to an animal, I think is is reaching a little. Anyway, I'll let you finish your uh, your point here, Jacques Fresco. The Venus flytrap closes on insects. So a guy named Bose of the Bose Institute in India said, I don't know about vegetation. So he took a cucumber and he ran a pin, a needle into it. And the pain indicated four times more sensitive than any human being. All right, I hear what you're saying here. Now, we're using the response to stimuli as a measure of animal life, which is, in all honesty, not a really good standard to dis determine whether or not something is sentient. Like I mentioned earlier, everything within this physical universe can respond to stimuli. It's not that crazy. If we had a look at minerals, at certain stones, you would find that they respond to certain environments. If you have a look at the works of Rupert Sheldrake and his morphic resonance theory, you find that there is a lot of evidence to suggest that mineral life have a certain level of awareness as well. Now, because of this, are we supposed to say, because of their ability to respond to stimuli, that we should treat them in the same way that we treat animals? I would think not. Without a doubt, I understand where he's going with this. I don't even need to listen to all of this, but I will. He is making the argument that everything, whether it is plant or animal or even mineral, I would argue, has a certain level of awareness. It is alive. But the thing that most people seem to confuse is there is a distinction between sentience, being able to respond to your environment on a subjective level, having pain receptors, having a brain connected to a heart. These are the standards for what we determine to be sentient from a scientific level and from an intuitive level we understand that there is a huge difference between plant life mineral life or animal life and if there are certain situations where plants cross that level into animal life like the venus flytrap and we become aware of the fact that they are sentient then without a doubt i would make the argument to avoid harming them but let's go on let's go on a cucumber and I used to think, well, things a vegetable, doesn't feel anything. So there you have it. Jacques Fresco making some valid points in regards to plants having some level of awareness, without a doubt. If you have a look at a plant, an animal, or even minerals under certain microscopes or using Curlian photography, this is something I've been very interested in, which is a kind of photography that is able to look at all things, all life forms, and see the energetic fields that encompass these plants. And you can have a look at how it's almost as if there is this kind of energy field that is surrounding not only animal life, but plant life. And you can see how it's affected by different situations. For instance, they notice that when you cook carrots as opposed to when you uh, pick, a, pick a carrot from, from the ground, that when viewed under 
Perlian photography, you can see the energetic fields within carrots when they haven't been cooked are much, much stronger. There is more life. What this engineer demonstrated was a comparison between a slice of cooked and uncooked organic baby carrot. The cooked carrot is on the left. The uncooked is on the right. The uncooked carrot has a startling line of strong energy that's clearly lacking in this cooked carrot that was steamed for 10 minutes. The photographic technique utilizes 50,000 volts and a broad range of frequencies to resonate with the test objects, capturing their patterns for analysis, whether living or non-living. We are aware on a scientific level that everything has life. But to make the conclusion because of that, that everything is the same, becomes very, very dangerous. And this is what a lot of people tend to move into. This is the argument they move into when they want to make arguments for why it is okay to eat animals because animals are alive, plants are alive, therefore they're the same thing. By that standard, because we are animals, and animals are a type of animal, clearly there is no distinction between killing human beings and consuming them as well. I mean, at the end of the day, everything is the same. And you'd have to agree that the connection between non-human animals and animals is much stronger than the connection between animals, from the word animus, that which has life, is governed by the anima, the spirit, life force. Animation, it has the ability to actually move. That would be the criteria for animals, the fact that they actually move around. They have motion inherent within them. The life force allows them to move. Plants, for the most part, don't. And I understand, of course, they slowly move over time. In fact, if you plant a flower and you watch it grow over weeks or even days, it moves. But you would have to agree that there is a clear distinction between plant life and animal life. Plant foods, without a doubt, are life. But they're generally characterized by foods that are most often freely released. In fact, you can make the argument that plant foods, when we consume them, often our consumption allows those seeds to be propagated. Of course, we excrete the seeds, and this allows the process of those seeds growing once again in the ground. You have a look at certain fruits like apples, oranges, plums, cherries, olives, mangoes, peaches, cucumbers. These are the fruits of trees. And then wheat, oats, quinoa, these are the fruits and seeds of cereal grasses. They are basically seeds which are freely released from the plant for the most part. And without a doubt, there are certain plants that have some kind of a defense mechanism. They seem to be not wanting to be consumed. But because that thing has some kind of stimuli, it shows the ability to respond to certain environments does not mean it is sentient. And this is the fundamental question here. I mean, even if you don't want to buy into the science, even if you don't want to abide, if you don't want to buy into my reasoning and my logic, I would ask yourself this. If you're in a situation where you picked an apple from a tree, would that create any disharmony within you? As opposed to a situation where you had to slaughter a lamb, you had to kill that lamb and watch it scream, watch it respond in a visceral, tangible, palpable way. Would that upset you? And this is the problem. Most people, when they eat the remnants of animals, meat, they haven't had to see how that animal arrived at their dinner plate. They're very disconnected from that. Therefore, they don't understand just how alive that animal is or how alive that animal was. If I watch the entire process of cutting up a lettuce and then consuming it, it would create no disharmony. It is a very easy process. However, if I had to go to an abattoir house and slaughter a lamb or a pig or a chicken, and then consume it. Most of us would not be comfortable with that. Most of us that had not been emotionally deadened 
by having to do that over and over and over again, which is something that happens to people when they work at slaughterhouses. They become emotionally insensitive to what they're doing. It's the only way that your psyche can deal with something like that, to shut yourself off. Otherwise, it becomes too much. The suicide rate of people that work in abattoirs is off the roof. It is not a pleasant job because naturally, people are not wired to want to do these things. People forget that your heart is a very, very strong, powerful meter for determining right or wrong. The problem with people like, and this is not to hang any kind of shit on Jacques Fresco. Jacques Fresco is without a doubt a brilliant mind, one of the most brilliant minds. But unfortunately, the problem with a lot of scientifically minded people, and I shouldn't say a lot, I only find that this is the case with some. The problem is that they are only caught up within the left brain modality. They're only caught up within wanting to understand things from a logical, materialistic level. Their emotional intelligence, their ability to think with their heart, has somewhat been deadened. And the intelligence of the heart is a powerful thing. There is an innate intelligence within our heart. And I say this metaphorically, but the ability for us to discern whether or not something is right or wrong, or even in discerning things of the material world. And the problem more often than not is people do not think with their heart. From a metaphysical Hindu perspective, the heart, which is the seat of consciousness, the heart chakra is the most important chakra. Once this opens, once you've risen your energy towards your heart. This is the fulcrum point. This is the point where everything changes. This is the seat of the emotional realm. Once this heart opens and once you become aware of things, of the connected nature of the universe, you have empathy. Your empathy is fully awoken. That is when you move into the higher levels of awareness. The idea of having only left brain intelligence, and I say this because people that are so logical, and I've seen this with so many people, are so logical, logical that they only have the ability to look at things purely from a materialistic level, where emotions, where consciousness, true heart-centered consciousness is absent, is a very dangerous thing. It is called the suppression of the feminine. And in order to matriculate into higher levels of consciousness, there needs to be an awakening of the Anahata. And I know this sounds metaphysical, but to break this down into pure logical philosophical reasoning, ultimately, there is an innate intelligence within your heart, within your emotions. And once you awaken this and see things, not only with your head, but with your heart, you will never see things with full spectrum clarity. And the same error that Jacques Fresco is making here is the same error that I've seen many brilliant minds throughout history, at least some brilliant minds, make, like Rene Descartes. Here's a man that believed that animals had no souls. They were basically mechanistic things. Therefore, he would dissect animals and watch them scream in torture and had convinced himself with his brilliant reasoning and logic that it was purely clockwork seeing how this animal would scream and respond to the pain. Whereas any person that was heart-centered would realize that without a doubt, animals absolutely, utterly are capable of experiencing subjective emotions. Finally, I just want to say that I am a huge supporter of the Zeitgeist movement. And... It seems that a movement that is so focused on efficiency, on creating a society where we are doing things in a way that is optimally effective, I would invite people that are supporters of the Zeitgeist Movement to consider adopting a plant-based system, a system that would be far more efficient. As we know, the world is in a dire state. And one of the biggest causes of this is animal agriculture. A plant-based system would be far more effective in combating this. As we know, animal agriculture requires 18 times more land 
13 times more water, more CO2 is produced within this system than that of a plant-based, that of a system that requires only plants. There are over 70,000 edible plants that we have in this world. Over 400,000 which we haven't even discovered to see if they're edible. To presume that there are not enough options, that everyone cannot live their lives on a plant-based system in the 21st century is ridiculous and I'm sure someone as brilliant as Jacques Fresco would, would give no debate to that argument. And I would invite him to consider if he believes that if all plants are sentient and they have the same ability for awareness and consciousness as animals do, I would ask him to think with his heart and if he feels any pain in cutting up a lettuce to that of a situation where he would have to cut up a lamb. Because I truly believe that if you cannot tell the distinction between these two things, with all the humility and emotional correctness that I can muster, then it would be better if you consider removing yourself from society. Because that kind of thinking is dangerous and it is not to sound smug, it is not to sound arrogant, but when we reach a level where we lack the ability to, to see with our hearts, we're so caught up in left brain thinking that we cannot tell the distinction between an animal, a lamb, or that of a plant, then the world is in a serious situation. Ladies and gentlemen, freaks and geeks, Peace out, keep it real, keep making, boom, those ethical gains. <laughs> All you can really see right now are my teeth. It's gotten to the point where it's become completely dark. But I hope you've enjoyed listening to this, this podcast. Drop us some comments, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you disagree with this message or if you like this message. And I humbly say that the purpose of doing this is one for entertainment, is to invite people to question their currently held ideas. It is not to be a douchebag. I realize that it can be very challenging when you hear thoughts that are contrary to your own, but in order to grow, we must reconsider the thoughts that we hold and constantly be rising into higher levels of awareness by challenging our default position on things. Until next time, peace out, keep it real. Boom shakalaka. Illuminate your mind with wisdom, strengthen your will with love, purge all negative thought patterns from your existence, and keep making those ethical gains. Life's purpose is to feel joy. Metaphysical, lyrical, said enough for truth. The only one to make change is walking in your shoes. Be the example, don't complain about the news. Making music and serving the world with the loo. Now you can be the same, or you can be the change. Find strength from inside, break through the chains. No one to blame, nothing to prove. You create your reality, it's up to you. Be the change.